Hi, welcome back. I hope you're all doing excellent today. In today's video, I will dive in the magical world of masks in Affinity Photo and share an amazing technique with you. So let's get started with doing a quick explanation of masks before I continue. I will mask the subject layer by pressing the mask button on the channels panel. So what is a mask exactly? Well, in short, masks allow you to non-destructively remove parts of a layer. This is done by the following very simple rule. Black erases and white retains. And everything in between from black to white is linearly erased based on the black ratio. So 50% gray will erase with 50% now as we have an understanding of masking, let's have a look at the different ways we can use masks in Affinity Photo. The first method is using mask child layers, which I actually used during the simple mask explanation just before. When you add a new mask to a selected layer, Affinity creates a new mask layer and adds it as a mask child layer to the selected layer. By painting with black and white, we can mask things out. Suppose we have a black and white image we would like to use as a mask. I can drag and drop it on the icon of the subject layer we want to mask, so it will be added as a mask child layer. Well, that didn't work very well. I personally don't know whether this is a bug in Affinity or not. I would have expected that it would become a mask, and if we look closely, it shows a clip symbol on the layer icon. If we right click on it, you have the context menu items of a mask layer, and see menu items like edit and refine mask, but it is not actually a mask. The fix is simple. If you look closely, it is still showing as a pixel layer. We need to convert it to a mask layer. We can do this by moving it out of the subject and right click on the layers panel and selecting rasterize to mask. Wonderful. If we now move it back to the subject, the mask is applied. We can add multiple masks to the mask child layer. Let me demonstrate this by adding another mask to it. I will duplicate the circles layer and rasterize to mask and add it again. When multiple masks exist, they will be merged together to create a final mask. I believe it uses the multiply blend mode to combine them. Let me show you how they are merged to give you an idea. Let me copy the original pixel layers and combine them to create the final mask. If I now apply this mask to a copy of the subject, you can see it is the same output as the original subject layer with the two masks. Okay, a couple of other things you should know when working with mask child layers. Let me remove the subject copy first. We can add filters in the mask child layer. However, keep in mind that in the mask child layer, the layers cannot have child layers themselves. So they will be applied in order how they are in the layers list, meaning from the top to the bottom. Adjustments can also be applied and added to mask child layers. However, the adjustment will not make changes to the mask layers unless there is an option to choose the alpha channel. For example, a levels adjustment would work on the mask if you choose the alpha channel. If you choose any other channel, it will work on the parent layer. An adjustment like HSL has no option to change the channel and therefore will only be applied to the parent layer. In our case, the subject itself. So let's move on with the second method we can apply mask layers. Instead of using them as a mask child layer, we can also use them as clipping childs. Let me group the current layers and duplicate this group. I will also rename the groups to remember which group is which. To use the masks as clipping childs, I'm going to move the mask child layers and drag them on the layer text and now they will become clipping childs. 
Notice the subtle difference how clipping childs are shown in the layers panel. A clipping child has less indentation compared to a mask child. The result is the same and the reason for this is that the result of a layer, whether it's a mask or adjustment, is clipped only to the parent layer. So in the case of a mask, the mask is only applied or in other words, clipped to the parent. One reason why you would like to use clipping childs is that clipping childs can have their own child layers which allows you to contain the applied effects and adjustment to a specific mask if you're working with multiple masks. Let me give you an example by going back to the layer with the mask child. If I add a twirl effect and I want this only to be applied to the second mask with the circles, there is no way of doing this. Well, I can move it up, but then the Gaussian blur is also applied to it. Let's go back to the source layer with the clipping childs. As I can add child layers to the mask now, I can clip the Gaussian effect to the mountains mask and clip the twirl effect to the circles mask. The same applies to adjustments. Before I move on, I have a confession. I mentioned that the results on both of these two methods are the same. Well, actually it is not. I don't know why, but it doesn't make sense to me. When looking closely, you can see the difference when I turn it on and off. I can even prove that there's a difference by setting the second group blend mode to difference. And as you can see, the end result is not black, meaning that they are not the same. This is a bummer. So the second method with the mask as clipping child is not perfect. So how do we get perfect masks with maximum flexibility? What I really want is to be able to keep my pixel layers and still use them as masks. Well, I'm going to share the third technique that will blow your mind and change your view on masks. Let's duplicate the second mask group with the clipping masks and remove the effects and the adjustments. I now have two mask layers. I will need to convert them back to pixel layers. Here's a tip for you. There is no default option to convert a mask back to a pixel layer. But do not despair. Select the mask layer and in the channels window, right click on the layer name alpha and select create grayscale layer. There we have it. We converted a mask layer to a pixel layer. Let me do the same for the mountains and remove the mask layer as we will not be needing them. Perfect. I will turn off the mountains for a moment and focus on the circles to explain this masking method. I will put the blend mode of this layer to erase, which now clears green subject parent layer. Why? Because the erase blend mode erases any pixel with an alpha value of 1. So, how can we make the Erase Blend mode act like a mask? Well, meet Blend Ranges. If I now change the Source Layer Blend Range to specify that the black stays and the white are removed, you actually get a mask. How amazing is that? Why is this working? Remember what a mask does. Black erases and white retains. We keep the blacks and remove the whites using this blend range. So the blacks from the layer are erased from the parent layer because we put the blend mode to erase. That is pretty cool. Now I can do the same for the mountains, but instead I will revert back the blend mode and the blend range of these circles. When you have multiple masks, it is much easier to group them and put the group on erase blend mode. 
This way, you do not need to change the blend mode of each individual pixel layer you want to use as a mask. Secondly, everything that you put in this group will automatically act as a mask. Having a mask this way brings a lot of possibilities. First, we can define ourselves how we want to combine these pixel layers to become a mask. If I put the circles layer to blend mode multiply, we get the default behavior. But I can change the blend mode to average or whatever blend mode I would like to use to blend them together. Second advantage, we are working with pixel layers. So we have all the tools available for us and the adjustments we want. So I could use the HSL adjustment on the mountains and change its lightness very easily. Also, do not forget, we can now use layer effects. If I apply the layer effect on the mountains, it just works. With mask layers, the layers effect do not work. Let me demonstrate this. If we go back to our initial layer with the mask child layers and apply a Gaussian blur on the mountains masks, nothing happens. So, the clipping erase mask is really powerful. You can control any aspect of your mask. And here is another thing you can do with pixel layer based masks. Controlling the behavior of the mask. As you might remember, I mentioned that the mask acts linearly from black to white. With a clipping erase mask, we can easily change this by changing the blend range. I can change this to a non-linear behavior. So in this case, I can make the darker colors erase more than default. While I'm in this blend range dialog, another thing you can do very easily is just to invert the mask. How easy is that? I think you have to agree, this technique is so powerful compared to the default masking method. A variation of this method is using a procedural function which eliminates the blending range change. I showed this in my previous video about removing backgrounds. Let me quickly demonstrate that before I leave you. So, I will reset the blend range of the group. To get the same result as the blend range, I will need to add a live procedural texture filter at the top of the group and enter a formula for the alpha channel. 1 minus average RGB or 1 minus RGB to I. This procedural layer does exactly the same as the blend mode. And if we want to invert the mask, we remove the one minus from the beginning of the formula. Using procedural texture filters can be confusing for most people. So I would say just stick to changing the blend range of the group. Much easier and much less processor intensive. Well, it was a long video today, but I hope you liked this video. If you did, please support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much and until next time.